So, hey guys, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, positioning libraries integration uh, in React. Uh, I'm going to talk specifically about PropertyS, that's a library I created uh, and uh, its purpose is to position stuff near other stuff. So, uh, I'm Federico Zivolo. Uh, you can find me on GitHub and Twitter as Fesrasta, and I'm a UI specialist at Quid. Uh, Positioning libraries. Uh, what's a positioning library? It's a library for making an element stay near to another element. Uh, not quite clear. So uh, let's try again. Uh, reference, like a button. Uh, popper, it's uh, like tooltip, uh, drop down, uh, pop over. Okay, much clearer. Uh, so the problems. Uh, there are several problems with the current solutions, like uh, communication between parties, uh, DOM manipulated by third party libraries, uh, node context is meaningful. Uh, let's start with communication between parties. Uh, you have to know when uh, the library that's positioned in your tooltip uh, have finished it doing its stuff uh, because you want to maybe show the tooltip, uh, you want to re render something to make sure everything is positioned correctly. And with current solu solutions, it's uh, a mess because uh, they are just like jQuery plugins and they do their own stuff without uh, you uh, knowing anything about what's happening. Uh, another problem is that you are not able to interfere with uh, their flow. So if you want to interrupt uh, the process uh, or uh, like make it work uh, with uh, React lifecycle, it's uh, quite hard. And uh, the other problem is that uh, you have no way to get the data that has been computed by the library and uh, use it inside uh, your application. The other problem is that the non manipulated by third party libraries, in this case, uh, the position positioning libraries, they are, as I said, like jQuery plugins, they just edit uh, the, the DOM. And uh, if uh, your component is going to re render, you lose uh, any modification that has been applied to the previous li library and you get uh, like uh, quite a few problems. And uh, they doesn't flow the, they doesn't follow the React lifestyle, as I said. So you don't uh, know that uh, when uh, React DOM is rendering, uh, the positioning library is going to do something. It's just does something uh, at, uh, like when he wants. Uh, so uh, in this case, we have uh, an example. The button is our reference element. The div is uh, the tooltip, and it has some inline style that has been applied by the positioning library. This style is going to maybe get lost uh, in uh, future renders. Uh, the next problem is that the not context is meaningful. Not context is uh, basically uh, the position of uh, a node in the DOM tree. Most of the libraries uh, just take your popover node. They move it uh, as direct child of body. This because it's much easier to compute the position uh, of the tooltip uh, if they know that there's not any relative parent uh, scrolling uh, container or anything on top of it. This is uh, nice for them because, yeah, yeah let's go to write. Uh, it's uh, bad for you because you lose uh, the context. Uh, for instance, you may have uh, uh, keyboard navigation that is going to break because uh, uh, you know, the, the node is not in w uh, when it's uh, supposed to be. Or maybe you have accessibility back practice uh, uh, that uh, make uh, uh, the screen reader going to read uh, the DOM and uh, it, won't, it, won't, it, will not, it will not find uh, uh, the, comp the component anymore and the text is not there. Uh, then uh, there is the problem that uh, when you move a DOM node somewhere else, uh, React doesn't know that uh, you have moved it. Uh, and. Uh, it's going to freak out. And the other problem is that uh, sometimes you may want uh, to keep uh, the tooltip uh, in the same context of the where you position it, position it originally because uh, it may have a scrollable mm, container that uh, you want to actually wrap uh, your, your application, your component. Uh, and that's uh, a problem because if uh, it's going to be moved outside, uh, it's going to ignore what's happening uh, in that place. Uh, so in this case, we have a button that is a child of a section and is child of a main uh, tag. And we have uh, the popover that was a child of main but has been moved inside the body because uh, of it. Solutions. Uh, yeah, that was hard. Uh, middlewares and lifecycle cooks. Delegate DOM manipulation to React. 
and non non context manipulation. So, middleware and self lifestyle crooks uh, are a thing that is pretty peculiar to uh, PopperJS, uh, and uh, they are on create, on update, and modifiers. These are three uh, fundamental building blocks of PopperJS. Uh, and uh, they make po it possible to integrate it with any kind of uh, third-party library. For instance, uh, on create and on update are going to be called the first when uh, the tooltip has been positioned at the first time, on update uh, on each subsequent uh, update of the position of the tooltip. Uh, modifiers uh, instead is like uh, uh, a big uh, middleware stack of uh, uh functions that take the data that has been computed by the previous modifier, modify the data, and return the data. And uh, they can also do uh, stuff like uh, modify your DOM if you want to, or pass the data to React, for instance, and have React then use that data to do something else. Uh, the delegate DOM manipulation to React uh, is uh, taking advantage of uh, uh, modifiers, we are going to override uh, the apply style modifier that uh, is the built-in modifier that uh, takes care to mo the manipulate the DOM. In practice, uh, PopperGS doesn't manipulate the DOM in any other place of uh, the code uh, except for the apply style modifier. If we override this modifier with uh, this function, we are going to take the data, we pass the offset uh, of the popover that has been computed by PopperJS uh, to the component state uh, and then uh, React uh, is going to use this new state uh, to apply the, uh, po the, the offset uh, to your DOM node uh, using uh, React. Uh, you can see that we are returning data at the end because we, as I said, uh, can chain modifiers to get uh, one after the other. So if we are going, we are going to modify the data we are going to pass it to the next modifier so that the next modifier takes the updated data and uh, can work on it. None of context manipulation, this is easy. Uh, basically, uh, I spent a bunch of hours to make uh, PopperJS uh, uh, work on uh, every possible corner case uh, that uh, you can think of. We have uh, the button that's a child of section. We have uh, our popover that is child of main. It doesn't care that they are in two different uh, node trees, uh, that uh, one may be inside a scrollable container uh, or anything. It, it will just work uh, because there is a lot of stuff going on. Uh, then, bonus point, composition. Uh, in practice, you can take uh, the library created by Travis Arnold, that's uh, React Popper, which is a React wrapper around PopperJS. The, uh, it only practically uh, overrides the apply style as I described it before and makes it work with React, uh, providing some useful utilities. You can uh, use it and compose it with any other uh, component uh, that uh, you can think of, like React Portal, React Resize Aware, React Click Outside, React uh, anything. And uh, doing so, you can achieve like uh, a lot of complex uh, components that do a lot of stuff uh, without uh, having. Uh, complex logic tied together. Uh, this is an example of uh, a tooltip uh, component that uh, have a manager as a wrapper of the whole component. Manager is a component provided by React Popper and uh, it basically uh, knows uh, mm, which Popper element and which reference element should uh, work together. So you can put inside it uh, a Popper and a reference and it will make them dialogue together. Then we have the click outside component that uh, is going to uh, call uh, the close uh, function every time uh, you click outside of the <laughs> reference element of the tooltip element. And uh, then we have the target that's basically uh, where the popper is going to be positioned uh, to. We have a portal, which is another component that is going to move uh, our popper in a different not context, but this time uh, having React know what, uh, it's what's happening and where it's going to be moved. Then we have uh, Popper, which is uh, uh, another component provided by React Popper, uh, which takes uh, a function that, uh, that has uh, the schedule, uh, schedule update uh, and uh, other properties uh, as uh, <laughs> arguments. And uh, we use these properties to make resize aware, which is a component that makes uh, uh, possible to listen to uh, size changes of any component uh, 
without uh, you to having to listen to like uh, DOM manipulation or uh, even a loop that checks the size every time. It creates an active uh, uh, resize event. So every time the content is going to change, even because maybe CSS is going to change it, so nothing that JavaScript knows about, uh, it's going to call the schedule update of Popper.js uh, that's going to then reposition the Popper in the right position without uh, you having like the tooltip that's going to be in a different position because uh, it's growing strings. Uh, and that's pretty much all. So demo time. Uh, as let's, let's hope this works. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this is uh, a reference element, a popper with inside a flag. Uh, when we click inside the area, that's uh, the, the gray area, you can see it. Yeah, OK. It's going to add, uh, it's going to do anything. OK, nice. Here, OK. It's broken. Oh, OK, nice. OK, it's going to add uh, emojis. When we reach uh, too much emojis inside the element uh, so that uh, there's, there's not space here, it will have uh, overflowed. It's going to flip it uh, on the other side. And every time we, we click outside, it's going to add more stuff. This is uh, written using basically the same stuff that I used in the uh, example before. And that's all. Uh, questions? provide a reference element and a popper element, uh, uh, popper.js yes is going to find the common offset parent, uh, which is uh, the parent uh, common to the two elements that has a position uh, uh, different from initial. This is uh, the uh, constraint that makes it possible to, pos to position elements relative to the, to the parent. Uh, so once we know the uh, relative parent, the, sorry, uh, the offset parent, uh, we can uh, compute the position of one uh, of the reference the and uh, this decide the position of the popper, taking in consideration uh, scroll bars that have been scrolled uh, or uh, a relative element that is, b is uh, between uh, the popper and uh, the reference, uh, the, the, the common reference uh, uh, container. And uh, that's basically it, but there are a lot of edge cases that uh, we have to cover because uh, each browser have different APIs. For instance, Firefox uh, uh, want to want us to check uh, both overflow y and overflow uh, x when uh, when we want to know if uh, if a proper uh, uh, element is a offset uh, container. Chrome doesn't give a fuck and simply <laughs> says that it's an offset container. So there are different implementations, and we have to consider all this stuff. works also when you render the popper on as child of the body like if you use a portal yeah it works uh, uh, you can render render the popper or the reference element inside uh, any part of the document uh, and it also works with shadow of dom so you can have uh, the popper inside the shadow of dom uh, and it's going to work anyway what the status of uh, bootstrap and popper ah uh, they switch it from uh, Tether to Popper.js uh, to position uh, tooltips uh, uh, because uh, the other library is uh, not maintained anymore. Yeah. So they are going to use uh, Popper.js in Bootstrap. So in which version? Bootstrap 4? 4, yeah. Bootstrap 4, yeah. When, when is Bootstrap 4 coming? <laughs> I don't know. I'm waiting for it because they have a bunch of stuff to update uh, and they're still uh, working. <laughs> When the reference moves, uh, mm, uh <laughs> 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 one more edge case. What do you mean <laughs> moves like uh, if it's going to be scrolled? Yeah, for example. Or yeah, I listen to all. in the DOM somewhere else. So if you. If you put some other style on it, <laughs> if it moves. So if you put style on it, uh, it's not going to update because uh, without, uh, for instance, resize aware that uh, is going to uh, listen to the size of the elements. Uh, Popper.js, uh, by default, doesn't have a way to know that it's changed. 
but uh, as, a as I showed, you can uh, uh, hook other stuff inside uh, of uh, your component to make it uh, more complex and have more <coughs> stuff uh, and then more features. More features. Uh, consider that PopperJS is a pretty lightweight. I mean, it was three kilobytes gzip uh, one year ago. Now it's uh, seven kilobytes gzip, but it's still pretty s pretty small. So I can add all the possible features together, but uh, I can make it possible to integrate them uh, easily which is probably just the <coughs> thing that uh, is nice about PopperJS because it allows you to hook uh, stuff inside uh, compared to the other libraries that instead uh, just uh, work as is, uh, you can do anything with them. Right, okay. you can ask any questions uh, in the break right now. So thank you very much again. Thank you.